Hey guys, today on AwesomeCast, AJ joins us from his remote location in the Great White North. We talk about phones, the FCC broadband initiatives, whether it'll really happen, some video games, virtual realities, augmented realities, fantasy realities, and more awesome cats. This episode is brought to you by our friends at Chachi Plays for Kids. Find out how you can participate and donate. ChachiPlays.com. Hey guys, welcome to the Awesome Cast. It's episode 134, coming to you from the studios in Pittsburgh, PA. I'm Michael Sorg, here to deliver the nerd goodness, the awesome things that we find throughout the week. Uh, with me on the couch, as usual, is the man who in a couple weeks will be playing video games for 24, straight, 24 hours straight for the kids, Chachi of Chachi Plays. There's his button, dot com, at Chachi Says on Twitter. How's it going? Hi. Wait, I have a button? We have a button. Where? What well, no, is the button that, that does this? Oh, I, that I, button. Somehow I switched us, I think. Oh. So I was I was cueing myself and talking oh. about you. So how you doing, sir? I am doing well. Yeah. We yeah. have reached the one quarter way. The one quarter mark. Yes. Wait, what's one quarter of five? Uh, twelve fifty. Twelve fifty. Twelve fifty. That's good math. Good math. Yes. Yes. I did it with the calculator earlier. <laughs> Just throwing it out there. Good, good. I'm glad. I'm glad accuracy is what counts, right? Yes. Right. I know there's yes. some announcement this, this past week. Uh, we'll talk about them here at the end of the show, though. What some exciting. Uh, about some of the, tor- the tournament information came out the last week, I believe. Um, uh, Street Fighter, Sega Saturn, that thing. Did that happen after that the show? I think so. I think so. Uh, Anyways, okay. but also joining us uh, once again. Uh, so for, confused. First time here in uh, 2013 uh, from Alaska is AJ Koptik of Virtual Potholes. I, did I get it right? Virtualpotholes.wordpress.com? Virtualpotholesjust.com. Oh, no. I got to fix that. Hold on. I'm fixing it's that. It's okay. No, no, no. They all go to the same place. Oh, it's yeah, all fine. yeah. But still. It's still, okay. Better. You're not ruining better. any of my hit counters or anything like that. Oh, no. Like, five. The analytics are off. It's not right. All your refers <laughs> will be wrong and your bots. and I, I don't advertise. <laughs> <laughs> Except for here, right? <laughs> no, yeah, this is it. But no, 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 no. I'm not getting paid to do that. I do that for the love of the game. That's right. The love I, of the of – the, uh, what is nerd it? <laughs> universe or something? I don't know. I do it. I do it because I love to. And the and the dot nets and the I, I can't remember what's the one that starts with the V. VB. Yeah, VB. <laughs> I do it for the VBs and the dot the nets VBs, and the C. I the don't visual program basics at all. And the and the visual the visual complicated, right? I don't, I don't really program. No. <laughs> at all. So. What do you do here? Uh, I do a lot of things. Today, I installed a quarter million dollar storage array, so. Wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know that, like, NAS that you have in your house? You mean the, the stack coffee? of Drobos I'm starting to amass? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's like that, but all in one thing and with a ton of drops and very expensive. Mm, I don't know. Those drobos are getting expensive. Not that expensive, of course. Um, yeah, you're not. You're not. You're not into. You're not into like almost phone number category. You're not up there yet. Do I see? <laughs> I do. Do I see the snow blowing behind you? Yes, you do. That is actual <laughs> snow. That is real snow just, back, like, back this there. Movie. This is not some sort of snow globe. This is real. This is Alaska, right? <laughs> exactly. Majestic Alaska back there. Exactly. This is right? the parking lot of a hotel. In majestic <laughs> upstate New York, Alaska, <laughs> whatever it is. Amazing. Listen, listen, it is, there was a lake effect snow warning, and they mentioned multiple inches per hour, and I went, oh, awesome. Welcome to New York, man. Welcome to New York. That's how they roll up there. Yeah, everything is just uh, – it's a frozen, frozen uh, landscape. <laughs> it is. I was going to say something else there, and I didn't. 
because this is a family show. It is. It is. It definitely is. This is a. This is going to keep that going today. <laughs> exactly. Uh, but anyways, yeah. Hey, it, it's the awesome guest. We're this is where we talk about the tech stuff. Uh, we're recording live here Tuesdays at uh, seven p.m. Eastern time. We're joined by the chat room. Uh, there's Bobby, uh, uh, Juggalo Jong, Brother Sorg, and of course a couple of us are in there as well. You can join us and check things out and 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 participate live with us. Please do. It makes the show way more interesting. You can also join us on Twitter uh, at AwesomeCast. Uh, you can drop us an email at contact at AwesomeCast.com. All the shows are listed e- nice and easy at AwesomeCast.com uh, over via SorgatronMedia.com, of course. Uh, you can look for us on Facebook. We're on Google+. Plus. You can converse with us there. We li- like to post a few stories that... Uh, that, that, that catch our attention throughout the week for, uh, you know, potentially for the show uh, uh, when we come around to it. We take a look at that and what we tweet and Facebook and all that stuff and see if anybody's talked any, about any of it uh, uh, in the meantime. Um, and, of course, you can find this show. We're on iTunes, your Roku's, uh, on the Blip TV apps on there, uh, and, and I think upcoming here on the Xbox as well. We're on YouTube. We're on Stitcher as well. Uh, so any way that you want to uh, listen to the awesome um so uh let's get right into it uh with the uh our awesome things of the week uh something that we started here a couple weeks ago just kind of to get the uh more positive like what are we getting excited about here in the last week um i i'll go first um um this is kind of like a two-story uh sort of deal uh lately and, and this has gone this, there's been rumblings of this for a while but it's starting to become a little bit more of a reality and i'm not really excited like specifically about anything about these guys other than just the possibilities um both ubuntu who we know of course for ubuntu linux i've talked about them i wrote some uh, articles on my blog about them here in the past uh and firefox mozilla firefox are developing uh, uh versions of os's Uh, I think both of them based on Linux uh, for mobile phones. And uh, it just came out today or yesterday here that uh, Firefox actually uh, just revealed their developer versions of the phones that they're they're finally releasing here. Uh, So that's going out to developers. And Ubuntu was showing off some developer phones uh, at CES a couple weeks ago. Um, Mm -hmm. AJ, what do you think about this? You, You follow a lot of the smartphone stuff, especially between the Android iOS kind of situation. Have you been keeping up on these? I, I have, and it's actually the reason why I haven't sold my Galaxy Nexus yet. It is sitting at home on my desk waiting for Ubuntu to say, hey, here you go, try it out. Mm-hmm. Um, it, that's, the, that's the device that they used uh, to show off the phone at all, all of their um, conferences and announcements. They pulled out Galaxy Nexus phones. Um, they're running, if I remember correctly, Ubuntu. Ubuntu is running a slightly modified version of their kernel mm-hmm. that's that uses bits and pieces from the Android kernel to run on ARM. Uh, I don't think they're using it as much as they could. Uh, I think they're using bits and pieces, certain hardware functionality uh, for chipsets and that sort of stuff. Um, but Android, or you, I'm sorry, let me start over again here. Ubuntu has always been able to run on ARM. They've had an ARM version of their phone for a very, very long time. So the fact that they're putting it onto a much smaller screen than uh, a tablet is unsurprising. Uh, I'm just interested to see how many apps follow them over and how many people actually try to start developing for this. Because if you can, you know, you want to reach out and start talking to Microsoft, they're not doing so hot with the uh, trying to be the third fiddle. And now you have the resurgent BlackBerry with BlackBerry 10. Uh, BlackBerry's trying to get back into the mix. You're, you're now running into a very crowded market, and none of them really operate codependently. Or I'm, not, I'm sorry, not codependently, but none of them operate together. You're not seeing like, oh, we're Ubuntu OS. We can run Android apps. And we're Android apps, and we run on Ubuntu. Like, they're not the same. And iOS apps don't run on Android. And, I, and Windows phone apps don't run on iOS. It's, you have developers having to devote their time to running on a bunch of OSs that they may or may not have, especially the smaller guys who are trying to get started. They're going to pick one and do it really well. See Instagram, who started on iOS when clearly they blew up quickly. 
but they didn't waste their time with an Android app at first because they wanted to make the iOS app as, as good as they, could, as they possibly could make it. Then they went over and did an Android app. Mm -hmm. But notice, they haven't jumped to Windows Phone. There's absolutely nothing sniffing around on the BlackBerry side, and I wouldn't be surprised if on the Ubuntu side and on the Firefox side, neither of those things came about either. Um, those become services. Instagram started as an app. Then it became a service. Um, Twitter is a service. Facebook is a service. Those guys are going to try and make sure that their services are as available as possible. So they're going to come out with a Twitter app for Windows Phone. They're going to come out with a Twitter app for BlackBerry. They're going to come out with a Facebook app for Ubuntu. And they're going to partner with the OS because they want their services to be used as much as possible. Whereas app developers don't have that. They're trying to make sure that you are viewing whatever content is inside that app, whether it's a game, whether it's some sort of functionality, that sort of thing. Um, I see Ubuntu, I could see Ubuntu doing well. I could also see Ubuntu falling off and just being this little niche OS that people just like to use because they can install it on various pieces of hardware. Mm -hmm. um, basically playing the Linux background that everybody thought Android would. Um, where, you know, in order to get into Android now, you have to have a phone that runs Android. You have to buy it from a carrier. Uh, I would love to see Ubuntu come out and say, hey, uh, go buy the uh, Nexus 4 from Google and you can install our OS. Here's how you do it. That would be cool. Now you're starting to get into the tinkerer side of things. Now you're getting into people being able to write things and, and do goofy things because they're going to, want to support the tiny little world that they have and this is something um, they could build too and, and this is something where uh, if they get a partner i don't know if they have any i know firefox has a couple partners that are already ready to uh put phones out this year i think in china and some some other markets uh which is a big step in the right direction it's another alternative that's great. You know, maybe you don't get the apps there. Um, uh, two things here. Well, well, okay, three things, actually. First, Ubuntu is somebody that has always been that where are the applications at kind of thing. And, and it's even right on their website that they're selling 20 million computers with Ubuntu pre-installed. So they know how to get mm -hmm. into those markets, whether that adapts to the phone, you know, it, it remains to be seen. The other thing is there's there's there's, there's two features I think that they're going to play in their fa their favor. And the reason why I use Ubuntu on on some, you know, older machines. Uh, most of the stuff that I work in are services like what Google offers, like Twitter, you know, stuff that's mobile. You know what I mean? Like stuff that I can go on and do Gmail over here. I can do my Google Drive over here on just a browser that pulls up. And those and those experiences are getting better. And maybe we're to the point where having that uh, official Twitter app, official Instagram isn't going to matter quite as much. I, I know there's definitely things like in Instagram currently uh, and some of the other experiences that are definitely not there. But for a true alternative, this may be a case in both of them. Uh, uh, secondly, uh, Ubuntu really kind of sticks out because one of the things they're touting on this thing is that you put it on like your you know Galaxy S3 and then you get a dock and plug it in into uh, a, a kind of a faux laptop situation. We saw this before. I think it was the... Uh, uh, what the AT&T uh, Axia or something like that, uh, maybe Motorola or somebody was doing, um, where they had like a dock station that was a laptop, and basically it powered your entire laptop. Yeah, and all it did, actually all it really did was run a full version of Firefox. That was really all it did. On that old then, one? Yeah, that's it. That's all it really did. It and, ran a full and version this, of Firefox. And this is based on Ubuntu. You said it's, a, it's kind of an offshoot of what they're currently doing, with Ubuntu, the um, Ubuntu Linux kernel, so there's more you know potential that you get this this uh, you know you know you know kick ass phone, uh, you know like you know like maybe like Chachi's LG or something that I just got. Stick that in there, and it can run your day to day activities as far as at least if you're somebody that you know again kind of lives in those services, like you've kind of Chromebooked your your your, your hardware, you know. Um, so, so I'm generally surprised that. And I know that Android, uh, you know, started in the iOS vein, mm -hmm. but I'm really surprised that Google has never come out with a like Chrome o OS phone. Like you come out with a, just is, hear me out on this. This sounds crazy, but hear me out on this. a little bit, a little bit. We, we, well, we kind of wonder why do they have two operating systems to begin with between the phone and the uh, Chromebook? Well, I think that they they serve two different purposes. Definitely. 
definitely serve two different. They serve two different markets. Here's the here's the thing. You have Android, which kind of grew with iOS, and they were doing uh, the whole native app on the phone thing. Mm -hmm. The Chrome OS is effectively the original version of the iPhone. If you think about it, the iOS one run apps and everything had to be a web app. Mm -hmm. And that's what they wanted you to do. That's what Chrome OS is plain and simple. So think about it. Could Google come out with a Chrome OS phone that syncs with Chrome on your desktop has because Chrome on Android is awesome. Mm -hmm. It is just as good as a desktop. It's tremendous on the iPhone. It's tremendous on the iPhone, but it doesn't have the it doesn't have the you can't set it as the default, which stinks. No, no, but it's getting it's getting closer. The way they're doing the app uh, switching and everything in there uh, that 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 iOS is allowing you to do now, it's getting closer that it opens up out of most of the apps that I end up using. So, but if you, if you use, I'm just thinking that, I'm just thinking out loud here. If you had that, so you have a you know a Google Drive, a Gmail. Basically, we want to keep you inside the Google services. This is also the same general idea as the, uh, the Facebook phone. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. If you had a – you could do a Chrome OS phone and sell it to people who really just want to check their email on their phone and go on Facebook. So it be a lower-end kind of situation. Right, a lower-end phone where they basically are giving it away even more than they're already giving away Android. But all they're doing is running Chrome. That's mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I, okay. I can't – I can't believe they haven't done that yet. Josh, do you have any thoughts on these phones? No. Okay. I don't. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I don't I don't think Ubuntu or Firefox are in any posi- or Mozilla or in any position to release their own phone. Hmm. No, definitely not. But I mean I, I think definitely uh I, I was telling AJ this I think last night, you know, we looked back on when Android was released and was like, really? What what are they gonna do with that? You know, it, where, where's that? Oh, yeah, but, no, the pe- people in general though. The, the general consensus. I got one as soon as it came the, out. The general consensus when they were first announced a Google phone, a, you know, Android, and they're like, "How are they going to do this open handset alliance? How are they going to do this? How, how? Why would they do that? You know?" Um, and and some say that like maybe the open handset thing didn't work out so well because everything's so closed down, whether on Google's side or with the carriers and everything. And maybe this is another chance at that. Listen. So, if it weren't for people coming up to me to ask me random questions, mm-hmm. I would get Google tattooed to me. All right. <laughs> um, but you do have something else that's pretty awesome, sir. Uh, I don't know. D- test the link. See if it works. It works. It does. It works. Okay. Fantastic. I got a video going. And I, this I is... can't. I couldn't do it on my phone. Mm-hmm. And I couldn't get verification that it actually worked. Um, so... Uh, I've been messing around with uh, Call of Duty Black Ops 2 mm-hmm. a lot. Mm-hmm. Like, a lot. I, I've i barely touched any other game since I've gotten that game. Um, from just online multiplayer to uh, the actual league play that they have, number 10th in my division. Thank you very much. Uh, last, last, league, last season, I finished third. So... I'll uh, beat that this, but that's not the point. Um, in in Call of Duty Black Ops Two, there's theater mode mm-hmm. where you can go in and you can watch a game film that you bookmarked, or uh, your last ten matches or last ten victories, and not only that, but you can edit it. And oh, nice. what's that? Nice. Yeah, you can you can do it manually. Or you can set the Xbox to just cut out the the best parts and make a highlight reel for you. I'd love to know what it picks as the highlight reel, though. Probably just like shots. Anytime you get points. Yeah, anytime you get points, it's it's on the highlight reel. Like I'm not even just seeing all kills. I'm seeing assists. I'm seeing like you pop fifty points there. Oh, watch Um, this. This part's. Is it this part? No, it's not that. Uh, There's a part coming up where I get like four kills in a row. Mm. Um, oh, but, somebody wants to tout. Somebody's touting their COD skills. <laughs> but uh, so this is cool. This is your footage. This is yeah, this yeah, is on this your is, YouTube channel. Yeah. Um. But uh, not only that, but it ranks mm-hmm. each uh each moment that it cuts out. 
Mm -hmm. um, and then when you're finished, when it's finished editing it into a highlight reel, uh, it, you can save it and it'll just stick around on your, uh, your Call of Duty channel, or you can uh, render it, walk away, come back and upload it. And it automatically puts it on your YouTube channel if, uh, if you're connected through the game. That's awesome. That, yeah. it, that's awesome. I mean, we, we talked about this kind of in advance uh, of uh, Call of Duty coming out, but this is this is something of Call of Duty, like you know, Activision, uh, Treyarch, whoever, really kind of responding to what's going on in the, the video communities out there, right? Well, this just... Uh, what Treyarch did was... Uh, Treyarch took everyone's concept of e-gaming mm -hmm. and actually made it... Gave them tools to do it yeah, instead of everybody yeah, working around it, it. Easy to made it so everyone could do it, uh, in hopes to help it uh, help it come to the forefront. Because because that's free advertising for them, right? Right. Uh, but yeah, it, it's it's amazing. I I seriously, it took me. I think the rendering was the longest part, mm -hmm. and that was ten minutes. Now, does it render on your Xbox, or uh -huh. is it okay? So it, it's actually your Xbox is processing this thing. Yeah, it's not happening in the cloud. Nope, it's not happening on YouTube. You can't do anything. You walk away and you, make a you sandwich. Hit, you hit that render button, and you either sit there and watch the progress bar go, or you walk away and you go do something for five to ten minutes. Wow! And then one click, it uploads it in the cloud in the background and you're good to go. Um, that's actually this, that, that was the first one I made. I have another one that's ready to go up. Mm -hmm. um, ironically enough, it's on the same map. I don't know. It was on a big uh, slums map kick that day, but mm -hmm. yeah. So that kind of blew my mind as simple as it was. I, I, I sent you a text message because it was before wrestling uh, on Saturday, I, I, I was messing around, and I sent him a text message that says, uh, I, I'm rendering video on my Xbox right now. <laughs> I think it just didn't compute in my head <laughs> when I when I saw that. I'm like, that doesn't make any sense. I what? know. What? Yep. <laughs> but uh, that, that's real cool. That's yeah. awesome. Awesome. So Excellent. Uh, AJ, I know you're, you're a big CO deer. I am. I am. I, will, I refuse to record what I do because uh, you will see that for as much as I love Call of Duty, I am uh, terrible, terrible at Call of Duty. Uh, <laughs> mostly because I, uh, the, I've gotten really good. People have gotten really good at the game, and I don't have time as, I'm a, as a grown adult with a job to play it as much as people who uh, just sit around their house all day and play that shit. I, I'm sorry. I just don't have hey, you really, uh, If you really want to be humble, go, grab, up, uh, go pop in uh, uh, the people that are still playing uh call it modern warfare uh, one or two. Oh, oh no there are plenty of people in there and they are good by now <laughs> hey aj right uh, yeah to, to, i ruined the show i know to lift your spirits some okay I, go ahead. I, I would just like to point out that uh in the amount of time that i have spent playing the game i've come to realize that the highest ranked people in the game hmm. uh as far as prestige level goes are actually yeah. terrible they just have time. Yeah, yeah. Like they're not they're not good at the game at all. Yeah, no, uh, most, most play... people that uh, I've played that had maxed out levels are horrible at the game. They're the ones that like took a week off on launch, like crazy people. Yeah, I mean, I mean, uh, seriously, they should be amazing at the game. Mm -hmm. No, they they mm -hmm. are terrible. They should put down the controller and walk away. <laughs> I mean, look at perfect. I uh, dope. This doesn't come out wrong. Uh, perfect example. My wife started playing how many weeks ago? Yeah, actually, just before Christmas, right? And she's at level forty-five, and I'm just getting to level fifty-five. Uh, just because she, every time she has some downtime, and I'm not, you know, there, or she's like, "Hey, let's play," or or she has downtime, she plays for whatever hours. I went and played basketball Friday night, and she was still in the same spot when I came back. You know, it, it, she just puts the time in. You know, she keeps saying, oh, I'm not very good. Am I very good? You know, but it, it, again, it doesn't matter. So excellent. AJ, do you have an awesome thing of the week? My awesome thing of the week, uh, it reminds me that we live in the future. <laughs> uh, that in we the live in a world. 
Beatles. Ah! Thank you. Thank you for picking uh, up. You're welcome. Uh, I, I reminded that we live in the future. Um, and my awesome thing of the week is the Chipotle app for the iPhone. <laughs> the Chipotle app. <laughs> Now, it, 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 it works. I understand this completely, though. I love Chipotle. I love their burritos. I love their burrito bowls. And I've never had their tacos because my brain and taste buds can't handle that sort of awesome. Mm-hmm. I love their chips. And in fact, now I'm mad because there isn't a Chipotle around here for a good, good long while. No, uh, I don't think there's one in New York. <laughs> not here in Alaska. <laughs> there isn't. Um, I want Chipotle chips really bad now. Um, I have my favorite order. Yeah, that. I have my favorite order saved on my phone and saved on my Chipotle account is my debit card. Two taps, burrito time. It is the best <laughs> thing in the world. It is the. This is what makes me love technology. Is it so simple? I, I, I bet I'm you they would pay you for that. <laughs> I'm not asking for much in the world. Boom, boom, burrito time. That's it. That's that's all I'm looking for. I'm, I I wish you know what? Where's my phone? I'm now hungry for chips. <laughs> the, Ask it, them, will you come to my place? You come to my house and bring me chips wherever I am. I'm in Alaska. Do you come to Alaska? Love AJ. That's that's what I would <laughs> type of our Chipotle. In the special instructions, <laughs> right? <laughs> By the way, uh pro tip about uh, uh the Chipotle app, which is awesome. Um when you order on the Chipotle app, you don't have to wait in line. You just show up and pick your stuff up. You've already paid. You just they just give you a bag and you leave. It's okay. the best thing ever because you forget. Like a, you it's like a, a a drug deal. It is. It is. It's like For it's like burritos. You're, you're the jackass that got that line cutter uh, pass from uh, at, at Kennywood, right? Uh, yeah. You got the fast pass. Yeah. To go to eat a burrito down. <laughs> it's no. Here's here's the thing. Is you walk in, you forgot that you paid already, mm-hmm. so you feel like you're walking in and getting free food. It's kind of like that uh, that that Apple feel, right? Where you're like, I wait, is that it? it, it, it it's got to be even worse. I haven't tried the like the the pay on the Apple Store app and then I've, walk in get your stuff. You know, I've done that. Well, here's what that. I've done. It was, no, 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 no. The Apple one, you have to go into the store and scan it with the phone. Yeah. I've done that, and I felt like I was in the future too because I was just like, "Boop, pay, done." Do you know, talk to anybody? No, no. How do they know? I, that's the thing that, that I don't get is how do they know? Next time I need a dongle or something, I'm doing this so just just to see. You know, I. Well, here's well, the thing: some there's some things that you need. I tried to do that with the Apple TV. Yeah, and uh, they said no. They had to. They had to do it. Yeah, yeah. I don't know stupid but if you go in there you can buy i bought my ipad with it wait 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 wait! you couldn't do it with an apple tv which is a hundred dollars but an ipad that starts at 400 no 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 they had to go back in the pack and get the ipad but they let me scan it they were like we don't care they were like, oh yeah here you go bam, bam, bam. Oh, okay yeah but but seriously if i if i ordered like like a, a i need another vga dongle or something because this one went bad right if i go order it i just go in grab it off the shelf go boop boop and walk out you don't even order it you just walk in you just walk in and you open the apple store app the apple store you have to join apple's wi-fi yeah yeah face right there you join apple's why you join the apple store wi-fi that's when it tells you that you are at that store and unlocks the pay here app. And then you tap the pay Again, here thing. I, I'm still on, on how do they not know you're a shoplifter, you know? It, it's just they're, – they're just like, oh, he held his phone up to this something and walked out <laughs> with it. That's okay. Are people watching for that kind of thing? I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know. Here's what, here's what happens. When you make the purchase – the purchase deactivates the security tag that's on the device. No, no. Because if you, if I were to just walk in there and just kind of wave my iPhone, just kind of randomly at the thing and go, blah, 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 I've paid, and I walked out, it would go off. But if I actually did it and scan it, it would. You it talks. I'm going to go in there and start throwing dongles out the uh, out, out, out the security thing to see if it goes <laughs> off. Just like just to, I'm, this is an experiment. I want to I want to see what's happening. Oh yeah, yeah, don't don't experiment. You'll go to jail. You'll go to mall <laughs> jail and then you'll go to real jail. And mall jail is is much nicer, much much nicer than real jail. 
comes up. For sure, for sure. Throwing dongles. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, uh, I, I have at least three apps that can order pizza right now. Yeah, um, yeah. I did. With, some of uh, them have a nice little delivery game while I'm waiting. Um, <laughs> or set, or I think it's the Papa John. I think that's the Pizza Hut app. Where they're, they, I don't know if they still have this, but they had this thing where. It was a game where you're the pizza delivery driver and you're like avoiding potholes and all this stuff that will make your pizza be longer. I don't know if it actually affected the time of your pizza. <laughs> um, uh, I think the Papa John's one, maybe the GitHub one, uh, uh, would say uh, your pizza's going into the oven. You're at this point of the process of pizza making and delivery. You know, if if you actually like followed up on it, you know, kind of, some of it's a little gimmicky, but like the, the point that I can just pull this up, going boom, boom, boom. I was sitting there on the on the porch uh, waiting for for my wife, the, you know, so we could go to work, and I ordered like three or four things like a couple of days after one of our one of our wrestling shows, saying, "Crap, we need this cord. Yeah, we need this. I could use one of these." And one ordered a bunch of stuff, sit on the porch, and it's here in two days. You know, yeah. it's just like every Back time I order internet. cat food on this thing, I'm amazed. But oh. the future. The future. Well, I'm gonna. I'm just gonna dream about Chipotle chips because I just hit the nearby <laughs> in the Chipotle app, and it was like, "No, you're in Alaska, dude. No chips for you." And I was sad. So. <laughs> Sorry, dude. Your place isn't cool enough. You should move. Oh no, no, no. It's it's very cool. In fact, it's cold. Oh. Oh, oh, oh I made a joke. <laughs> Well, um, we got one more awesome thing that was submitted to us actually from uh, Brother Sork, brother of the yeah. show. Uh, Bro- Joe. Brother, yes, brother of the show. Uh, this was actually from SourceFed. He found this. Uh, 86-year-old uh, lady uh, is still gaming. Uh, there's a video on here, uh, if it loads here, uh, uh, from the BBC. 86-year-old Hilda Knott has been gaming for 40 years, and it doesn't look like she'll be stopping anytime soon. She's playing PlayStation 3 games. She's playing all kinds of stuff. I Actually, I think this is the uh, first thing they show. She's actually playing GTA. Um, yeah, it's... She's and she says she has a sixty-inch uh, TV just so she can read it better. Um, yeah, she's been gaming for forty years. That's amazing. I think every one of us here probably wishes that this is us uh, at eighty-six, still rocking the PlayStation fourteen or whatever the hell it's going to be. Right? This is my grandma. Yeah. This is this is your grand your your unknown grandmother. Yes. You're like this is oh. This makes sense now. And she's British. Yeah, I was going to uh, – the I, I we were watching this before the show, mm-hmm. and I asked you uh, where she lived. And I was going to invite her to Chachi Plays. <laughs> <laughs> but she lives in England, so that wouldn't happen. Yeah, yeah. AJ, do you, do you – oh, where do you go? I don't know. <laughs> I didn't look up to see that you left. <laughs> see, apparently, you can't take this one. Um, or or maybe Chipotle is coming. Uh, do they deliver Chipotle? No. In places? Not around here, no. I know. So, they don't. But thank you for that one there, uh, Brother Sorg. Um, what the hell? Um, so we have a couple other stories to talk about from the week. Uh, Chachi, do you want to keep it video games? Okay. All right, uh, uh, SimCity's coming out. Have you heard anything uh, new coming up about SimCity? No. No? Well, I'm about to uh, 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 let you know. Right. Um, fill me in. I want to fill you in. A couple of cool things happening with scoop. SimCity. Uh, one, the game looks awesome, first cool. of all. Um, and I did hear over the past week that they, uh, they're they going to be having a beta um, that you can like go play it for an hour and, and check it out. Uh, but this kind of goes along with the wow. Uh, I didn't know they were. I, I they probably should have already been doing this kind of thing. Uh, Electronic Arts is going to do a classroom edition of SimCity, which <sighs> makes sense. It's, oh, don't don't poo poo it. Wait, 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 wait. Yeah, there was a sigh there, Chuck. Why the sigh? Uh, no, it wasn't a sigh because I'm all for video games in the classroom mm-hmm. because that will just. Uh, solidify what I've been saying Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, uh, because if you know me just wait for Call of Duty at EDU let's do this well I mean uh, if you know me you know for a fact that one of the first arguments I use in 
uh, defending video games is that they, they actually enhance your learning ability. Your, mm-hmm. your cognitive skills are greatly increased uh, by playing video games. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. it's not that they are putting it or making an education version of it. It's just that I don't see why they need to make an edu- a special version of it for the classroom. I think it makes sense. Because, I mean, I know for a fact that um, the first school I went to in one of the, the dumb, the freshman classes that you were required to take, uh, one of the things that we did was play Sims. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was, it was this dumb life skills class. So this is their replacement for the, uh, uh, carry an egg around. Yeah. Huh. And don't, I, don't I, let your, don't let your Sim drown in the hot tub or, or, or lock him in a room without a bathroom. Or lock them in a room without doors that's on fire. Mm, mm. But I mean, yeah, it, I mean, um, it, EA sim games have always been used for educational purposes. What the- um, as far back as me being in, what was it, sixth grade? Mm-hmm. I, I mean, we played Sim Ant mm-hmm. in class. Mm-hmm. I, I, we had one computer, and we each got like 10 minutes to control the backyard with our black ants of doom well we, there was there's was oregon trail back in the day right hey, this, so, this, this mean, is the next one you know video games have always been used for educational purposes it, so it, creating an edu- uh, a classroom version of it is unnecessary well i don't know if it's unnecessary i mean there's some cool features that, that make sense for teachers uh teachers will be able to design and share lesson plans for the game online um the students will use as a tool to learn important lessons in city planning environmentalism and social economics is there can already do that suffer which they already do but the, the fact that you can go in and actually develop the lesson plan around whatever you're trying to teach there in the class i think it's pretty important you know to be able to actually shift that and then you know here go, go at it you know that that way it'll, it'll kind of keep them from you know just creating circular roads i don't know what what's some of the stupid stuff they do in in, in sim city i've actually not played much of it in sim city yeah uh loading pre-built cities mm-hmm. um and just destroying yeah, them. like taking away that kind of stuff or or like maybe maybe you 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 pre-build a city to to share a lesson you know uh to demonstrate you're trying something. to you're trying to demonstrate traffic flows you're trying to demonstrate population density you're trying to just you're trying to demonstrate a specific example that's the cool part and then if you can lock down uh, Godzilla and tornadoes and all the other fun stuff. Yeah, that's that my concern. Sim City. Uh, <laughs> then you could actually could get a legitimate lesson out of it. it I don't know. I think that you could do a lot more with that too. Like if you do something like I remember playing demos for like uh, SimCopter, where you could import the city you built in SimCity, and then you're in it with like this copter game or the racing game or something like that. Um, yeah, I can see them building that out, especially since everything's in 3D. I mean, like I said, everything looks like tremendous in 3D and everything uh, for electron for uh, SimCity. Uh, this version around it, it like, and uh, it's going to be pretty good. What's that? Oh, uh, I was checking the uh, the total for. Uh, oh, I get some plays. some last some Chachi plays uh, yeah. uh, stuff happening there. Yeah, blur. Thirteen fifty. But either way, who's this guy? I, <laughs> Chachi's like I am Facebooking everybody I see come through on here. Um, other stuff. Let's see. I think I had Sorry, a couple I was... other video game ones. No, I will always. Let me just state for the sure. record that I will always be for video games in the classroom. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There's mm-hmm. absolutely no situation in which I'll be like, no. Mm-hmm. Because whether it be Dance Dance Revolution, or whether it be this Sim City, whether it be other Connect games for fitness. I, mean, I can I find a situation in which Call of Duty is appropriate for a classroom environment. Well, you know what? The first couple geopolitical of Geopolitical factions. There you go. Uh, there geopolitical you go. factions. Um, military Academy. The the uh, What's that? Junior RIDC. Mm-hmm. Is that it? Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, I think they're already Whatever. using games like that. Like uh, They've been using the Doom engine for how long for, for simulation? For the for the the army and marines and everything, so you know it makes sense that something like that would still work R-O-T-C. with that. ROTC, that's what R-O-T-C. it is. ROTC, yes, some letters like that. Right? Yeah, <laughs> okay. Um, also on the video game side, uh, I remember I was kind of going on about uh, the Oculus Rift uh, a couple uh, a couple weeks ago or last week or whenever was that, that the was. VR? That was the VR thing last week. Well, uh, 
Valve is porting, uh, though actually they already did port Team Fortress 2 to virtual reality and will share their thoughts at GDC 2013. Um, it's already happening. On the on this same note, mm -hmm. um, Google Glass has invited people who pre-ordered Google Glass mm -hmm. to uh, a two-day developers conference. Yep, yep. Because they, they uh, well, they released the background, they, they released uh, the... They let people pre-order the developer right. edition yes. back at uh, Google I.O. Like, that was like over the summer, like June, July, mm -hmm. something like that. Uh, and they will now soon, within the next couple months, be receiving them. Right. So, um, yeah. I mean, and that's, uh, and, and, you know, not to mention Sergey, Sergey Brin uh, being, you know, spotted on the New York subway with it all the time. Right. That came up a couple days ago, um, but on this, so it was on the VR note. That's why I wanted to bring it. Oh up. yeah, I mean it is. It, it is to a point. I mean it's a little different than VR, but it, it's still kind of. Uh, uh, what, what am I thinking? Augmented reality, AJ Moore. Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean you got the Oculus Rift, you got the Google Glass, you got. Yeah, like I'm not walking down the street with this thing on my face. No. <laughs> Look at that thing. No. No. <laughs> no, that's video games. Pure video games. That is purely for. Here's the problem. Do do we not learn our lesson with the Virtual Boy? Did we not learn that lesson? Well, this is the thing. Like everybody, I think a lot of people did learn their lesson. This isn't they red. gave up on it. Yeah, this isn't all red, and it's going like, to oh, kill God. my brain. <laughs> um, and the developers, you know, and, 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 you know, you hear about that thing about the develop. It was the guy that developed the Game Boy, and he developed the Virtual Boy. Pretty much got shamed down in the company because of Japan's, you know, social business, you know, situation, yeah. and they like led that whole like downfall to him dying a few years later, like in a car accident. <laughs> it was like wow, yeah. wow, yeah. Uh, like the inside of my rental car this week is all red, and it feels like I'm in a virtual boy, and I don't <laughs> feel like vomiting, but I kind of feel like vomiting sometimes because <laughs> so. I'm just like. Oh, everything's red. I've been here before. It was with tennis game, and I was playing Wario, and this is terrible. <laughs> so they're already they're already again. This is like a test thing that they adapted it, see how it would go. Um, they're going to have a couple of sessions for it, um, and uh, you know, a couple of things they're already saying. Valve suggests that games might need to be built explicitly for VR. I think that was kind of obvious. Um, I mean, I have, the, the big thing, like back around 2000, was was these things. You hook up to your PC and you can play Doom with it. You can play, you know, Duke Nukem and Quake and stuff with it, right? Um, but uh, but yeah, they're, so they're going to have these sessions. I a couple of quotes they had: the game design in VR could could avoid uh, uh, many of the issues that came up during Team Fortress 2. So it really was kind of like an exploratory thing. So I don't expect like they do Doom 4 and they like you know Carmack you know just tosses it on on a uh, virtual reality except for you know say hey let's see how it works uh i think it's something that it inspires and and somebody like a valve like a like an id software uh needs to really kind of create that killer app for this thing so and no i don't think it's coming uh, to xbox anytime soon yeah i i i want I, I want like augmented reality to happen but there's so many times when i'm just like that seems dumb yeah. Like the like here, here's what I want them to do. You mean virtual reality. Yeah. Here's what I want them to do. You see these these are regular uh these are regular glasses for yeah. seeing my face. Yeah. I want that I want that just as an overlay in the one lens here. I don't want a thing that hangs out here. Mm -hmm. I don't want it to look like I have this giant robotic thing. I just want an overlay right here in the lens. Until you can provide that to me in a regular pair of, of, of glasses, I'm out. Keep keep working at it. I want an overlay right here in my lens. Other than that, <laughs> keep going. So um, even even the uh, Google Glass prototype isn't acceptable. No, because it's a silly thing that hangs over your face. And there's and worse things. Weird. And there's wor there's worse versions that came out at CES too of other people trying to do the same thing. Uh, first, one note from the chat room: John says that the only reason Virtual Boy didn't fly was the lack of a head strap. Yeah, you can see here like this on the thing. Uh, but product testing you know, said I, little Jimmy I also got may dizzy. Have made a poor, I may have made a poor, poor choice with the Virtual Boy as I played that game in a car while moving. <laughs> That's horrible. That's, yeah, it's horrible. I almost fell down to Toys R Us trying it out. Um, well, here's the, yeah, I pulled. I pulled out of the the the, the, the lenses, mm -hmm. and like I went from like black and all red to bright light in the middle of the day, and my eyes just like shriveled up, and I couldn't <laughs> see. And that's why I wear these. So, 
<laughs> Thanks, Virtual Boy. I can't see anything now. You're welcome. <laughs> um, and also, you need to think about on the augmented reality side you're talking about there. Um, you know, think about, I mean, this is like kind of the 1.0, right? I mean, remember what the iPhone was like before we got these kind of things that are like, you know, doing some really kick-ass things. You know, uh, go pick up an iPhone 1. It's kind of clunky. Go pick up your, your G1 Chachi versus what you picked up a couple weeks ago, right? Um, this is the 1.0. Maybe down the line, Google Glass is not going to be th the thing that catches on. The thing after it, or maybe after and after it, is going to be the thing that's going to be the iPhone that changes everything. Listen, as it I tell you every week, every week that you bring up a, a virtual reality or an augmented reality set, mm -hmm. I tell you the same thing every week. What mm. do I tell you? Is it on my Xbox? No. No, wait, that was the other thing. I still want the headset from Hackers. That's right. That's right. They had it right in 1995, right? I, I liked it. Mm -hmm. It was just a headband and the thing flipped down, I think. It, no, it was it was a uh, like a, a Mylar headband, and it just had that one display that hung down over the eye. Which character? Uh, 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 what's his face? Who had killer? It? Zero Cole had it. What was it? It was uh, in the, it was in the last action sequence of the movie uh, where they go to Grand Central Station and take over a phone bank. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna and they're all like, do, oh, they're all doing now. like their their super secret hacker hand signals to power themselves up and hacking into the phones, and they're all like, I tell you what, I didn't find that, but I found the headset from uh, Johnny Mnemonic. Uh, hold on. We'll That's the one I was talking about. There you about. go. There you go. Right there. Right there. It's just silver, you know? I can't see it. Oh, oh I'm sorry. There you go. I was on preview. Yeah. There you go. Just a cool silver headband, right? Yeah. Um, Let's see. You trying to find the hackers? Yeah. All right. We'll, we'll look for that. Okay. Um, What else we got here? Uh, let's see if we got any more video game stuff. No, I just got the flu. I actually thought this was kind of interesting. Cool. I, I, I always find it uh, interesting when, when uh, they're using social media uh, as kind of like a, a sample to track things like this. I know there's, there's some research like Google's been doing it, Twitter's been doing it. Um, 250,000 social media uh, users in the U.S. said they got the flu. Uh, this is between Twitter and Facebook. Uh, and this, and and it, it, it was in this has been an epidemic we've been seeing it in the news and everything but to see it kind of reflected on social media uh not me i just didn't tweet for four days uh so i don't know if that's really an accurate thing so yeah they i i think that this is this is kind of that this whole idea of big data mm -hmm. of taking all the data that we just uh, spout at the internet mm -hmm. facebook posts twitter posts instagram uh, Pinterest, uh, uh, email, all this other stuff. We generate an amazing amount of data. Each person generates an insane amount of data every single day. What do we do with it? Like, hey, good job, Google, for taking all of the tweets about the flu and figuring out the flu outbreak. Hey. Um, mm -hmm. what, what's yes, that? Chachi? Um, uh, to support AJ's fa uh, fact about data, and how much we put on the internet. Mm -hmm. um, so I requested my Twitter archive the other day. Oh, yeah? And I received my Twitter archive the other day. Ooh. Mine's up. Ooh. And so I decided that... Uh, I'm like, you know what? I, I'm i not a big fan of of trees. I, I, I'm going <laughs> to I'm gonna kill... Josh is going to put out a book. I, I'm going to kill an immense amount of trees, and I'm just going to print out my Twitter You're archive. You're completely printing this at the office, aren't you? I was going to. <laughs> However. He might catch on. I uh, I opened uh, my largest month, which, for those keeping track at home, was November 2011. Okay, I'll uh, we'll write that down for a trivia fact later. Um, it was 96 pages long. Where do you get this? It, 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 which page is it supposed to pop settings. up on? Just on settings? Mm -hmm. Like under account? Yeah, if you uh, if you go to your, your little button and click yeah. settings, it'll mm -hmm. be down at the bottom near the uh, location. Location. Um, however, and that's 96 pages of one row per tweet. 
in 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 Excel. No formatting, just plain text. You could just release it as a book. Ninety six pages. Just, go ahead. just release it as a book. I'm like, uh, I I I'm not gonna kill that many trees. <laughs> uh, hold on, that wouldn't sing. Uh, I'm just trying to think of the numbers here. Chachi, you've tweeted as of right now. Uh, sixty thousand eight hundred and eighteen times. Uh, that's actually seventy thousand. Um, did you lose ten thousand at some point? I did around uh, year two or three of me being on Twitter. Uh, Twitter did this thing where they just empty everyone's tweets. I do remember that. And they started back at zero. Can you verify that? Like, is there a giant gap in your tweets from around that period? No, I. I Actually, I don't know. I'll have to, I'll have to look at the... Because I'm, I'm wondering if they, they may have the data. updated the number yeah. since. I might have to look at the data pack. 50, um, wow. But I'm yeah, I was... At, I have uh, 31,319. Yeah, I'm on 32. Yeah, I, I tweet too much. I know. Thanks for rubbing it in. I, I'm responsible for the useless data on the internet. Mm-hmm. Uh, you're not touching... Uh, uh, let's see here. Let's see the, the difference. Is, oh, it's a good margin. Uh, the biggest, the heaviest tweeter that I know is uh, Mikey with one hundred twenty-seven thousand six hundred sixty-one tweets. Yeah. So he yeah. also has three times the audience that I do. That's true. That's true. He's or, also, no, not three. More like twelve times the audience I do. Uh, only thirty-seven thousand followers. That's what happens when you're on the radio. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So he's, yeah, he's you by thirty almost thirty six thousand followers exactly. Yeah, I know. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. that makes complete sense. Mm-hmm. Um something else. Hey, hey did anybody follow the mega story? The what? The mega story. The mega story yeah. where Kim dot com with the most ridiculous internet name ever. Uh, <laughs> basically they're going they're gonna go to the toe a Dropbox and they're gonna put out fifty gigs of storage. Yep. For a, I signed up. I don't know what I'm going to do with it. I don't know what I'm going to trust to put up there, but I signed up. I don't up. know what it is, but I want it. <laughs> and, and there's some other stuff he's doing, too. I guess they're also, what they what just called it Mega, is uh, it, it's the privacy company, by the way. So uh, so there's that, right? Um, the first couple days, you could not get in to get signed up. A uh, ridiculous amount of, of, of users signing up for this thing. Uh, let's see what I got. For uh, 100,000 registered users uh, within the, the site's first hour. Holy crap. Um, so it, it's like Dropbox. There's security around everything so that even if the FBI comes knocking on his door and takes his servers again, your stuff is safe, even though it's going to be gone. Um, like a couple of my clients a year ago uh, that were using this. That's why I said, hey, let's use some Dropbox, guys. Um, a, lot of, <laughs> a lot of companies use this for real, that mega, that mega upload. Um, so I wonder if they're going to come back to this. But he's got some interesting plans. Like I said, he's going to do like music, and video, like legitimately, uh, there is a a a plugin that they're they're releasing. I think they may have already released it for Chrome. I haven't found it. As I saw somebody talking about it, uh, where it replaces half of your uh, banner ads on. Uh, I think they said the top like 150 Alexa ranked sites uh, with mega upload ads. And this is a credit system that will lead to you getting free uh, uh, credits towards music and movies on the services they're going to be introducing later this year. They're going all out with this. And I yeah. guess the launch party was ridiculous in New Zealand. Did you sign up, AJ? No. No? No. No, uh, I have... <clears throat> I still have 25 gigs with SkyDrive that I haven't touched yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, um, Dropbox, I don't really use as much as... Uh, uh, Google Drive. I've just used Google Drive a lot more. Mm-hmm. Um, I've considered paying for Google Drive. Uh, my uh, my company uses Box for file sharing. We don't have a file server at all. We just use Box. Oh, Box.net. Uh huh. And it is awesome. Yeah. It's slow. It's a pain. The it's a real pain to traverse a file structure. You know, so you're really looking for something. You know, I was actually um, looking at Google Drive today. I started uh, organizing some stuff for the next quarter. I got classes uh, uh, 
uh, starting tomorrow. Well, class. I have one class. Uh, but, yeah, I started using it as this is where my documents go. You know what I mean? Like, Dropbox is where I throw videos. Since a lot of my clients I have to toss, you know, a lot, a lot of that's how I deliver is through Dropbox. Um, but, I, you know, organizing something like that, like I was grabbing all the slides, the slides that I have to work with and, and the syllabus and any other documents, making notes to myself and realizing, like, I can, you know, then I can pull up, like, the slides on my, my, uh, on my iPad because I like to have them handy when we're going back and forth, like when we're doing a demo, like what we're doing, like Flash and stuff this quarter. We're using Dreamweaver last quarter. Uh, so I think I found a reason to use Drive other than just Google Docs. And then it does have like the Google Documents in there. I can throw, when somebody sends me a Word doc, it'll be in there and they can at least open it. I actually made, uh, thanks to you, AJ, because remember when you were sending us that video and it was just like a link out of Google Drive? Um, yep. I put my edited syllabus in Google Drive made a link, and that's what I dropped in Blackboard for them. So we'll see if that works in practice tomorrow. But um, but if, if that works, you know, between that and, like, you know, throwing my calendar in there that I was already created for, P for, for the school, uh, for my involvement with the school and saying, here, I'll just start putting your assignments on here, uh, you know, I'm completely, like, Google-fying, you know, the schoolwork and organization. Yeah, I, my, my wife and I share a Google calendar mm -hmm. because it's just that much easier. Mm -hmm. it, 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 literally, I know what she's doing. She knows what I'm doing. Um, it's just beneficial for everyone. Uh, I mean, Google Drive has done awesome things. We share documents between my wife and I. I, I. I have Office installed at home on my home machine only because I need it for work and I occasionally use my home machine for work. But other than that, I, I have no reason to use it. I'll just use Google Docs. Yeah, yeah. It really, like, even in something like Calendar is just kind of like, Somebody tried to the to sell me on another calendar system that you had to pay for, and it just no. it was just like one. You know, I'm like, I don't know. You gotta pay for it. We're using Google Calendar. He's like, well, don't don't let being paid for it be a thing. I'm like, and we're already on it, and it's integrated, and people can click on it and add to their calendar. It's it, it just it just works, you know. And we can change the look of it. We can do this and the other thing. Uh, I can just say once, hey, here it is, and repeat for however long, you know. I got this weird thing that's like on every first. Wednesday of the month and I can actually say hey put this on every first Wednesday of the month now I mean it's, mm -hmm. it's it's getting so much smarter and I'm starting to use it to like actually invite people to events when we set up meetings and you know thanks to somebody in a company actually doing that for a phone meeting uh, last week I'm like wow I'm gonna start doing this to everybody so you guys are gonna hate me for that one sorry charge um, what you're gonna start getting uh, meetings from me in, uh, in Google Calendar now because I figured out how to do that why because you don't use Facebook why are we meeting? We meet sometimes. No, we don't. Not yeah, we anymore. do. Not anymore. <laughs> I see you Tuesdays. I see you Saturdays. I see you I see Tuesdays. You. <laughs> I see you two Saturdays a month. I see you two or three it's Wednesdays like visitation. A, a month. And then on Call of Duty. Yes. Um. Anyways. <laughs> and if you can't conduct business over Call of Duty, I don't know when you can conduct business. That's so our. That's, that's our team I'm building. Saying. That's our team building meetings right there. We're not a very good team on there yet. We got to work on that. So. Literally, if, if Google wanted to, if Google really wanted to take out Dropbox, mm -hmm. they need to get the integration that um, Dropbox has on iOS. Mm -hmm. and you do that, done. Game over. Because uh, I, it's unbelievable. Yeah, well, well Drive, uh, the Drive, already, you, you said the iOS app? The app's getting better. I, that's that's why I dropped everything in there because I can pull up the PDF and and like I pulled it up on my phone to go through it while I was going through the program. The the, the you know kind of say okay this is how we do this. I'll show them this da 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 um, to fill in the gaps of the slideshow and everything. Um, so that that's like I said, documents go in there. I even throw the flash files in there. It's not going to open on my phone obviously because it's flash, but at least it's there in one place and I can grab it. You know, I don't have to worry about because like, my problem was I have I have kind of like a file dump I can use like there, but I can only access it on the premises or when I do a virtual uh, desktop login, uh, which is kind of annoying uh, when I'm on certain connections and everything. So so I was like, OK, we got to rethink this, you know. So um, in the meantime, I want to uh, point out uh, the chat room is apparently going on about Swedish fish. Oh, wait, that was you, AJ. Grape Swedish yeah. fish are the devil. They are the devil. It's red or get out. <laughs> there are no other flavors. No. Uh, I like the orange ones too. I, orange. Don't get me wrong. I, I 
yes, red Swedish fish are almost only the only Swedish fish you need, but I like the orange ones as well. Red oh. and small. The only the only exception I'll make is that uh, the, uh, one time my wife bought me a uh, my wife that one was for Bobby uh, bought me a five pound bag of the uh, multicolor Swedish fish. Mm-hmm. And they were awesome, and I got sick because I <laughs> ate them too fast. Uh, that I I also have gotten sick from eating Swedish fish too fast. <laughs> it's a common thing. You 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 don't you don't think about it, and then they're all in your mouth. That's yeah. how it happens. <laughs> that no, he's not lying. I mean, you, you go and you get the three pound box, or you get the five pound bag, and you open it, and you start eating. And you keep eating, and the next thing you know, you put your hand back in the package, and they're gone. Yeah. So you sit there in shame because – shame or pride, depending on who you are, uh, because you just polished off a three- or five-pound package of Swedish fish and didn't even realize that they were gone. Yeah, I had – I used to get them uh, – Walmart used to sell the boxes – of Swedish fish. Remember like when you used to go to like the penny candy store and they had the box mm-hmm. and they would mm-hmm. like count them out. Yeah. Uh, then I became an adult and had my own money. And you could, you, I found out that there was only like three bucks for that box. Yep. And then I was like, wait, <laughs> that's, I hate your markup. Good, sir. But anyways, <laughs> uh, I, I used to buy the box and I would just have it sitting next to my, my machine on my desk. And I would just, I would do this. And like you don't even realize it because the flavors are just so awesome that you have eaten like a pound and a half of Swedish fish and not even like questioned it, not even went, you know, I should slow down here. You've just killed a pound and a half of Swedish fish without even trying. Yeah. And you're just like, oh, where, where, where did it all go? <laughs> oh, no. Yep. On that note, I think it's time. Oh, you know, I do have to mention. Can I mention real quick one more story? Go. Uh, it looks like Nebraska might get fast internet. Well, no, like, like kind of by law, I guess. Well, you know uh, what? what? That kind of makes sense. Was that Cuba Happy. finally got fast internet? So, <laughs> I, I guess Nebraska should get fast internet. If the commies can do it, why not Nebraska? Right? If it's good enough for the commies. Well, here's the question. Does Wyoming get it? Uh, apparently, everybody gets it. Uh, uh, there is a bill, uh, the FCC, uh, uh, Julius, oh God, Genachowski. Oh, I've heard that word before. Uh, challenges service providers and local communities to build such networks, saying communities uh, would turn themselves into innovative hubs that would create valuable jobs. And of course, he's talking about uh, pushing for gigabit broadband in all 50 states, by 2015, community just, built. Listen, Ju, uh, Julius Ginnikowski, the hand motions I wish to make are not approved for this show. Mm-hmm. Come on. Do you know how hard it is to do that? You know how hard Files it is? Files gave to- up. Yeah, exactly. But Google did it. That's because Google did it. In- how many neighborhoods are they in so far? Go ahead. I'll wait. I, I'm, not, I'm not sure, actually. I have no answer for you. One. One. They are in one neighborhood in Kansas City. One. And the rest of that town is sitting there going, well, when am I supposed to get fast internet? We won the contest. We didn't even have to be like Topeka and rename our town to Google Kansas. <laughs> like, they're still waiting. They're yeah, still yeah, waiting yeah. to get that. But to it's get still that. rolling out. I mean, it's a process, man. It's a process. What? You can't be like, gigabit, what's up? <laughs> I know that. And I think that they, the FCC doesn't. It's really well, hard to push gigabit over a very long distance. He says 2015. He's not saying like in the entire state or anything like that. He's oh. saying that the municipalities, like I think of bigger ones, you know, like like you know, in the one in Kansas or Topeka or something, or Pittsburgh or Buffalo or something, right? Uh, to that extent, I'm not talking about like you know little little Jamestown, PA, you know, or that that's a freaking uh, Fisher town and, and all that stuff. I'm talking like it's, decent sized municipalities that are doing stuff no, like. What what? Uh, where is this story? Where is this? So I can, it's it's, oh, a, so. it's the first one under under the uh, awesome thing of the week. Okay, hold on. Let me. That's the awesome thing. That's uh, it, it's the first thing I, under the awesome I, things. It, it's under I the grandma the, story. 
Uh, hold on. I was I was trying to keep the positivity. I really, really was. And he is saying okay, by so- 2015. He's saying he's pushing for it now. Now he's talking. He's calling on municipalities. But the problem is, all these guys like Verizon and Comcast keep getting laws passed in states like here in Pennsylvania that make it impossible for municipalities to do uh, right. uh, their own broadband. So, right. what is the FCC going to do about it? Yeah, this number one. T- tell me you're going to strike all that stuff down. Tell me you're going to fight that kind of crap going on and yeah. then and then give get a plan. Say, hey, here's what Google did and you can do it too. Or or, or plan something out. Just calling on people. I don't he know. There's probably more to the statement, it. but Chattanooga. He set a goal of getting 100 meg broadband to 100 million households by 2020. That's adorable because that happens basically anywhere now. Coaxial mm-hmm. cable can support up to like 150 megs. So all you have to do is just, uh, just turn that on. It's gigabit that's the problem. Mm-hmm. Gigabit over distance requires a lot of throughput. The technology's not there yet, you're saying. And then, yeah. And then you have to think about this. Normally, the bottleneck is at your house mm-hmm. from, from a user standpoint. So you usually have like a, uh, let's call it a, a average speed. Let's call it like a 10 meg that's basically Comcast default. We call it a ten meg connection. Which, by the way, let's go back in time to 1997 and tell your tell yourself that you're going to have a ten meg connection in your house, and that's going to be the slow end. That'll blow your childhood mind. Yeah, that face would be made. Uh, all right. So, that by was, the way, I'm really 16, sorry. That was sixteen year old me. Yeah, I'm sorry, uh, audio listeners. Audio listeners, what sort just made a face? That uh, was a whole lot like this. What? Yeah, that. So, 100 meg is, you can do that right now. Gigabit requires a ton of throughput. Right now, if you got a 10 meg connection at your house, you're going up to your carrier office. That's This is a, a techie lingo for uh, the phone company's main location in your general town. And from there, they have a very fast, very uh, a very fast connection back to their backbone provider, mm-hmm. which is the, effectively to internets. Um, that's how it works. The problem is, is that if you get a gigabit connection, that means that the backbone has to go to probably ten gigabit in order to just keep that up. Mm-hmm. And I don't. I don't see how you getting MP3s faster makes everything an innovative hub. It's not. It's not really. Uh, well, it, it's you know, me to my house is one thing, but they're calling on this because if you get gigabit internet, you can. It will spur innovation. You know, you have groups like the startups and CMUs and and, and things like that. Uh, they're citing uh, communities. Uh, well, first, uh, one thing they say that uh, only 42 communities across 14 states already have high, uh, ultra high speed broadband, according to the FCC. Um, and this apparently uh, includes cities such as La- I'm sorry, Lafayette, Louisiana, and Chattanooga, Tennessee, uh, which have been uh, on the forefront of municipal fire movement. And I think that they, uh, again, they have really seen a big boost in, in uh, entrepreneurship uh, uh, because of stuff like that. And that's what we're, we're, we're looking at in Kansas City again with Google, too. That's why they put that out there. If I live in, if all I know is that if I were building a uh, disaster recovery site, I would put a chat. I would buy like three houses in Chattanooga, Tennessee, and just <laughs> tap into that municipal broadband and ta da, I've got a replication link to wherever my data center is. Mm-hmm. That's what I do. And there's, there's some cool initiatives going around, but I, it, there needs to be, I mean, I guess the best they can do is promote those initiatives. Right. I mean, I, this isn't something where everybody's going to have gigabit. No. And, and the problems that you're describing, AJ, really re- remind me. I know they're not directly technically uh, the same thing, but really kind of feel like the problems uh, that we had uh, with DSL when, when broadband first started, where it was like, well, how far are you from the from the main office? You know, where it was a, a distance issue. Um, so. But- DSL still is a distance issue. It, it is. It is. My, my dad sits on like the three and a half mile mark and gets, uh, uh, I, you know, less than my edge connection and completely unreliable. Like you can't even tweet from the thing. It's ridiculous. So, um, but we'll see. Maybe one community will get that. That one that has a GameStop there in Nebraska. Uh, so, <laughs> so we'll see. We'll see what's going on. What's that? 
no one no one in the middle of nowhere gets fast internet except no. for that one tiny tiny town in nebraska that has a game stop in the middle of nowhere that's right that's right looking at you omaha anyways with that this is the awesome cast a, a great time thank you everybody in the chat room uh <laughs> dropping the uh sweetest fish conversation i'm glad they're staying with the tech uh talk here um <laughs> Uh, uh, so we're gonna get ready to uh, talk some wrestling. I don't maybe I don't know if we're doing video games. Uh, we'll see. Uh, no, but we had a lot of it here in Awesome Cast. Though. No video games. We had a lot of it here in Awesome Cast. Right. Uh, but hey, thanks AJ. He's at virtualpotholes.com at AJ Kuptik online. He's the director of Tech Fantasy. I am. I I am the director of the Tech Love of the Tech Love Boat. Uh, right. I'm your activities the director. Tech boat. Mm, where all your dreams come true. The blowing snow has stopped. That's good. That's good. <laughs> what from Alaska? The <laughs> snow has stopped. Burrito time. Right. Oh, don't. Mm. <laughs> so. Shashi, we're gonna get we're gonna get uh, tweets at three o'clock in the morning because AJ went out to find a burrito. I'm in a snow trip because I want to find a burrito. <laughs> I have a pack of sled dogs. <laughs> I'm racing. I am racing the winter for a burrito. I will race you into the ground. <laughs> <laughs> Chachi, he's doing at Chachi says on the Twitters. Yes. He tweets all day, every day. Yes. And he also has and every single tweet is the greatest tweet you will ever read. Indeed. indeed. Like the time uh, Edgar Snyder. Oh, yes. So today, <laughs> I'm excited we about this. I, I, Use your inside penis. I, uh, <laughs> wrong I show. No all right. All right. It was in so, the chat room. Sorry. Uh, I, uh, I wasn't paying attention. I was actually doing some work. Mm -hmm. And my phone buzzed. And I, it was an email. So I opened it up. And the email said, at Edgar Snyder is following you on Twitter. And I'm like, no freaking way. And sure enough, I went to Twitter, and his very interactive Twitter account uh -huh. is following me on Twitter. You know, I had an interesting uh, 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 situation where I, you know, we, we... Hold on, I wasn't done yet. Sorry, I, 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 while you're setting that up. Uh, I had a thing where I was talking about on uh, you know, wrestling. We were talking about NXT, and I was like, "Yeah, you can get on Hulu Plus, or you can get on Bright House Cable if you're in Florida." And then Bright House Cable started tweeting me and asking why I was talking about them. <laughs> I'm like, "No, I'm in Pittsburgh. I don't get your service. Thank you very much. I was just talking. You're just very popular in the wrestling circles because you're the only one that carries this program." So, eh. but Anyways, uh, sorry, I got the email. So I said, "Oh snap." At Edgar Snyder is following me on Twitter. There's no fee unless we get money for you. <laughs> and they responded. Yep. There's no fee for the follow either. <laughs> oh. oh man, they got a good they got a good crew over there. <laughs> and no oh, one oh, outside oh. of Pennsylvania knows what we're talking about. Nope. 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 No. Nope. I, I, I do, but I live outside of Pennsylvania. I'm fairly. Well, I'm fairly certain that this is a very regional uh, podcast going on here. <laughs> so oh, yeah, wow. I, I'm pretty <laughs> sure. I mean, seriously, I don't, I, I don't know. I don't know if anybody from outside the the area really listens to us. I mean, there's much reason to. You know, other, you, than, oh, other, oh, other than expatriates like AJ here. Okay, wait, 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 wait. Here, here. Let's give this a test. Okay. If you're not from Pennsylvania and you listen to this show, send us an email at contact at awesome .com and let us know where you awesome are. Cast. If you do, we'll say hi to you. Hi. We don't have T-shirts or anything like that. We'll, no, just, no. we'll just say hi. Yeah. So, uh, hello, uh, Billings, Montana. Wait, sure. Edgar Some... Snyder is Bobby's uncle? What? 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 Uh, I see what he did there. Because he, he works in a office? Listen. I don't, I don't know. Oh, I was going to say, I'm in the middle of a charity fundraiser, and I'm sure that guy is loaded. I don't know. Do we count? <laughs> just yeah, there you go. It, just there you throwing go. it out well, there. Well, maybe you should tweet him about the charity then, right? I should. Yeah. Um, uh, tweet at him and say, hey, do you want to sponsor this? We're, we could be best friends. 
Yeah, Forever. there you go. There you I go. I guess, be your I, guess technically, I guess technically we got a, a wrestle fan and Alex here from, I believe, California and Texas, uh, uh, respectively, that do listen to the show. But they could just kind of, I don't think they would if the, the Mayhem show wasn't after this. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, so uh, by the way, uh, sad, sad update before we go. Uh, the nearest Chipotle to me is uh, 42 miles away. Oh, is it still in New York? Yeah. Really? Probably, probably more towards uh, the city. Uh, no, other way. Oh wow! Other way, Rochester. It's in, uh, it's in Syracuse. Syracuse. Syracuse gets a Chipotle. Oh, they're, they're Syracuse has two. Two. We're pop- they're popping up like weeds over here. There's there's one over in uh, Scott Township now. Oh my God! I want Chipotle so bad now, and I can't have it. Mm-hmm. Oh. Mm-hmm. Over on Cochrane Road, right there, oh. right there. Oh. Okay, this has been the awesome cast. <laughs> Before I get real sad, <laughs> yeah, we're here, we're live Tuesdays every uh, every Tuesday at seven p.m. Eastern. Uh, live dot sorgatron media dot com. You can join us in the chat room like these fine oh, people. Man. Um, the flyers are down to nothing oh, against the no. Devils. Oh no! Uh, tweet us at awesomecast at awesomecast. Contact at awesomecast dot com. Let us know if you're uh, not in the Pittsburgh area. If you're an out of towner, if you're an out of stater, especially, uh, I like to hear if, if we are reaching out. I mean, I, I'm curious. I, I just expect that you're all locals. You know, I just think there's a Pittsburgh vibe. You know, uh, iTunes, Roku, Blip TV, YouTube. You can find us out there. Um, make sure it's the the awesome cast that that that's actually good because there's a lot of guys that took the name. I guess. A few of them out there. Uh, I'm Sorg. Uh, check me out, MikeSorg.com, at Sorgatron on the Twitters. Uh, I'll be around. I'll be around doing things, you know. Uh, we'll see you guys next week. Thanks to our awesome chat room. You've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. Awesome. We're This is the awesome cast. Actually, let's... Start it out just like that. AJ's on. Welcome, Welcome to the awesome stuff. cast. The low-key, gentle, awesome cast. Your face is gentle! Oh, why did we do that? We yeah, were doing that was nice. really loud. We, we need it. to watch your volume there, sir. We're going to do the NPR opening. Yeah. Welcome. Welcome to the awesome cast. Oh. A fresh air look oh, at things that are NPR. awesome in technology. There's, yeah, there's a reason. Um, this, I, is w- I, <laughs> this is W A W E. I'm your host, Mike Sorg. Welcome to the Awesome Cast. Here joining me today is AJ Koptic, coming to us from Alaska. Oh, I'm gonna make mess. <laughs> On the couch, <laughs> we have Chachi playing with those. Fresh sensations. What? The sounds from the underground. I'm gonna punch you in the face. You really? Yeah. He definitely doesn't. The sounds are laid down by the underground. Sounds laid down by the underground. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I just want to punch you in the okay. face. <laughs> That was awesome, Chachi. I don't know why you didn't think that was funny. Chachi, Chachi, Bobby says use your indoor penis. <laughs> I want to let you know that. My indoor penis.